Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mega Man Marathon. Now, you're probably wondering, why is Mega Man 4 and 5 getting paired up for a single review? As many of you have noticed, when it comes to the future installments of the Mega Man franchise, not a whole lot changes between games, and I think it's the most apparent with these next two titles. Like Mega Man 3, this is actually the first time I've fully played and completed these two games for the sake of a review. Sure, I've seen the games in action thanks to the likes of Brain Scratch commentaries, but until now, I never actually played them for myself. So then, how well do these games hold up from a perspective such as mine? Well, let's go to the Virtual Console and find out and see if these games compare to the likes of Mega Man 2 and 3. Alright, Mega Man 3, like its predecessor, was a critical and financial success, though not quite on the degree as Mega Man 2. Still, it was enough to convince Capcom that a new Mega Man game should be released every year until the developer's thumbs fell off. So, one year after the release of Mega Man 3, Mega Man 4 was put on the shelves for gamers to relish. Right off the bat, it's quite clear that Mega Man 4 has a bit more production values than previous entries because we actually have an opening cutscene when the game starts up. Yeah, Mega Man 2 had that building shot, but this definitely has more of a visual flair. Thing is, it's entirely focused on the origins of Mega Man. That's sort of odd timing, isn't it? You wait until the fourth game to establish how Mega Man came to be? It's great for newcomers, but why would newcomers start with the fourth game in the series? Hmm. With Dr. Wily defeated for the third time, a new threat has emerged in the form of Dr. Cossack, a Russian scientist who wishes to prove his superiority over Dr. Light by sending his eight robot masters all across the world to wreak havoc. Wasting no time, Mega Man begins his journey to cut that shit out. The villain may be different, but that doesn't mean anything in terms of the game's structure. There are still eight bad robots to destroy, each coming with their own stages and hazards for Mega Man to overcome. Ooh, look at this fancy smancy new interface, this is pretty cool. Graphically, the game is pretty good for NES standards, and I personally think it's the best looking Mega Man game so far compared to what I reviewed. Just look at the awesome rotating sprite of Mega Man when he gets a new weapon alongside that badass soundtrack. Mega Man is equipped with everything he had in Mega Man 3, which includes the slide ability and the rush adapters like the rush coil, the rush marine, and the returning rush jet, which isn't as useful as last time regrettably, since you can only travel in a straight line when on board it. It's still great for ignoring certain obstacles, but eh, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Oh well, but Mega Man himself has once again seen another upgrade in the form of the Mega Buster. Yeah, I know I've been calling Mega Man's normal weapon the Mega Buster for some time now, but that term technically wasn't introduced until this game, and even then it's the name of the charge shot. But anyway, by holding the shoot button down for a second or two, Mega Man will begin to flash, where the player can then unleash a more powerful shot by releasing the shoot button. It's pretty powerful shit and can pierce multiple targets with good aim. Overall, a pretty nifty ability and one that I welcome, except for the charge up noise, I hate that shit. The new Mega Buster makes tackling your first Robot Master a little more comfortable and... Huh. Wow. He's just... Yeah. Jesus, and I didn't even have to use my new Mega Buster for that one. I mean, holy shit, was this intentional? His pattern always resets with one dinky power pellet. There's simple, and then there's pathetic. And Toad Man is pretty fucking pathetic. His weapon isn't too shabby though, the Rain Flush, which is an unblockable screen nuke that's ideal for taking care of baddies with annoying shields. I like this weapon. I also get a kick out of the Flash Stopper, which freezes almost everything in place for a few seconds. It also makes the likes of Pharaoh Man a complete joke. Look at that, he can't do shit now. That's where it really stops though in terms of the fun I can have with the new weapons. The new abilities Mega Man could receive in previous games were somewhat situational to begin with, but here it's more obvious than ever. I never use any other weapon I earn unless it's against the Robot Master that's weak to it. Sure, I may use the Skull Barrier to get past the annoying rocks located in Drill Man stage, but... I'm sorry, I can't think of any other situation. Now that I think about it, I think I use the new gadgets you acquire in certain stages more than the actual weapons. The balloon item is pretty much just item 1 from Mega Man 2, and the wire is a pretty cool looking grappling hook which you can use to reach higher areas. I only wish you could aim this thing somewhere other than up. I think it would have been sweet if Mega Man had an equivalent to Link's hookshot from A Link to the Past or Ocarina of Time. Depending on the pathway you choose, you may not get these items until late in the game, but trust me when I say this, get them ASAP. The level design has gotten a bit more obnoxious since Mega Man 3, and by that I mean spikes. Spikes are fucking everywhere in this game, folks. That and bottomless pits. Oh, an occasional cheap enemy placement. Okay, it's a lot of things. Some minor, some major. Come on, how is a first time player supposed to know that's gonna be there? Not every level in the game is bad, mind you. Some are fun in their own ways, but then you have the feel that just sort of drag after a while. Like Ringman stage, which is jam packed with mini bosses. I just wanna finish the level already, damn it. You still have access to energy tanks and such to make the situation more comfortable. 
and he even got a new buddy called Eddie that occasionally helps by appearing in certain rooms and giving him a free item. Here's a trick for you. If you exit and re-enter the room Eddie's in without taking the item, Eddie will respawn with a different item. Keep doing that for an easy energy tank. Another thing you can do is get an E-Tank in a stage, kill yourself until you get a game over, and then collect the E-Tank again. Since you keep any energy tanks you had prior to the game over, and it respawns in the area you collected in in the first place. I find this handy for dealing with the final stages. Speaking of such, when all the robot masters are vanquished, Dr. Cossack's headquarters are finally revealed. Yeah, Kakao might get it, he's Russian. Well, at least it's something different to look at immediately. Anyway, you know the drill. You have to tackle through the fortress levels and then finally wipe out the doctor and his oversized grabby grabby claw. But as soon as you do so, Proto Man appears out of nowhere along with this young girl named Kalinka, who happens to be Cossack's daughter. Apparently, Kalinka was kidnapped by none other than Dr. Wily himself, and he forced Dr. Cossack to do his bidding while he... I don't know, plays Sudoku, I'm not sure. Dr. Cossack apologizes for giving Mega Man hell with our blue bomber heading off to stop Wily. So Dr. Wily was the one behind it all, not really surprising, and now you gotta deal with Wily Fortress stages as well. I begin to notice a pattern here. The Cossack levels are this game's equivalent to Doc Robot levels, but at least these levels are sporting brand new level designs and bosses, so I feel it's a proper way of extending game time. The Wily stages are undeniably a little harder than last time, but it's still no problem for the most part, especially since I went out of my way to grind energy tanks before heading into the Cossack levels. There's something very anticlimactic about how the final part of this game feels. Like it was added at the very last possible moment just for the sake of status quo. Even the final matches with Wily himself don't feel very epic. No, by all means, Wily, don't try something else. The definitive final battle with Wily does sport some awesome music, but... <laughs> he just appeared on top of my charged Pharaoh shot and killed himself as a result. Nice going there, Wily. So Wily is defeated once more and then he... Easily escapes via a rotating door. The fortress explodes and the credits roll. The fuck? Wow, that's an ending. Why don't we just head into Mega Man 5 now and see how they manage to follow that masterpiece of storytelling. The game begins with Dr. Light's kidnapping, and the kidnapper is none other than Proto Man himself. Man, this guy really can't seem to decide if he wants to be a good guy who helps Mega Man in the nick of time, or a jumping douchebag who gets kicks out of stealing jolly old fat men. Proto Man is also sporting 8 robot masters of his own to take down Mega Man. Are robot masters made in packages of 8 which anybody can order a set of and cause problems with? Where did they find these robots? Charge Man, Crystal Man, Gyro Man? I can assume that Capcom didn't want to run certain themes down to the ground at this point, but what the hell does a Star Man do? Mega Man 5 really doesn't change or add a whole lot. In fact, one can argue that it doesn't do anything new at all. Yeah, the 8 robot masters have their own level designs and challenges, but that's supposed to be a given. It is a sequel after all. Mega Man doesn't have anything new in his arsenal, Rush is still available to use in certain circumstances, and Mega Man pretty much works the way he did in previous games. The only real new additions are the Super Arrow, which is only really useful for getting an energy tank when you don't feel like using the Rush Jet, and the new Robot Buddy you can unlock by collecting letters you can find at each stage that spell out Mega Man 5. Once you do that, you gain access to Beat the Bird, an invention of Dr. Cossack that he gives to Mega Man as an apology for the hardships he gave Mega Man in the previous game. When you use it, it goes all ape shit and attacks anything within the vicinity, even bosses. It's pretty nice, but nothing spectacular. While there isn't much new to the series, there have been slight alterations. Again, thanks to Dr. Cossack, Mega Man's Mega Buster has seen an incredible boost in size and power. I will go on and say that the charged Mega Buster is the best weapon in the game. No bullshitting here. No other weapon you score from the Robot Masters come close to the practicality the Mega Buster contains, either because the weapon is just weaker, too situational, or just plain fucking sucks, which is about 90% of them in this case. Like in Mega Man 4, I only really use the other weapons I earn when I want to have an easier time dealing with the appropriate Robot Master, but other than that, I'm usually sticking with the Mega Buster. I don't like how you lose the charge when you take damage though. That never happened in Mega Man 4, so why is it suddenly happening here? I feel the level design and presentation is a step back from Mega Man 4. There are stages I do really enjoy, like Starman's because of the low gravity gimmick, and Waveman's because of this unique water section that comes complete with a large octopus robot, but everywhere else, I have no real solid opinion on, not even the robot masters themselves, they're just… there. I guess I can hate Gravity Man's stage because of my deep hatred for anti-gravity gimmicks and platformers, but the level doesn't really do much with itself to begin with. I just don't feel anything with these levels. Maybe I'm starting to get tired of Mega Man at this point, but I didn't have these thoughts when I was playing Mega Man 4, so it's gotta be something else going on here. Ow! Fucking crystals. Hope you got Star Crash for this part. Alright, so what's really going on with the story? Once you finish off the last Robot Master, you can begin to infiltrate Proto Man's base of operations. Does anyone else think this fortress looks like a spaceship? Don't ask why, but every time I see this damn thing, I'm just waiting for it to spontaneously take to the skies above. I know, I'm odd. There's only one thing I really hate about these stages, the fucking white tigers. They jump as soon as you shoot them, but if you don't aim your charge shot just right, your ass is getting mauled. 
Besides that, the stages don't really contain anything I deem difficult, except maybe this part right here because of the conveyor belts. The bosses you face at the end of each Proto Man stage are also a total cakewalk, but something tells me there's more to this than meets the- Well, 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 look at that, this Proto Man was an imposter the entire time. The real thing helps Mega Man restore his energy, while Beat the Bird pecks the fake fucker to death. Once that's over, Dr. Wily appears to begin shit-talking Mega Man, completely ignoring the past four games. Actually, make that five, since we had to blow up a lot of shit to get to this point. Once more, there are Wily stages to tackle, which, again, aren't too difficult, but you should be careful where you position yourself. Oops, guess I should've known there were spikes there. Boy, am I a dipshit. This jump can kiss my ass as well. That's damn near pixel perfect. The boss rush does a fine job in draining my resources, but luckily for me, I have this mystery tank I found in Crystal Man stage that not only refills my energy, it also fully restores all my weapon energy as well. Not that it really matters anyway, because the final battles with Dr. Wily, like in Mega Man 4, are nothing to worry about, especially if you collected all the letters and unlocked beat. All I have to do is dodge the projectiles. Again, Dr. Wily has experienced defeat, and Mega Man manages to save Dr. Light, but before anything can be done about Wily, the fortress begins to collapse and holy shit! I didn't realize Mega Man was that strong, why couldn't we just punch Robot Masters to death? Thankfully, Proto Man once again steps in and saves both Mega Man and Dr. Light from the collapsing ceiling. Seeing this ending sequence really puts me in the mood for Castlevania. Yeah, maybe later. But that's the end of it, folks. The fortress collapsed, Dr. Wily once again escapes, and Proto Man once again just leaves. It's almost like this game never happened in the first place, it's just there. Actually, that can pretty much summarize my entire viewpoint on Mega Man 5. It's just there. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it, but if you're like me and played the first four games before it, then it's really unremarkable from my perspective. It's also pretty easy too, so I could recommend it to those who are just getting into the series, but I don't think it has that fun factor of 2 or 3. Now, with Mega Man 4, the one thing that really sets it back for me is its level design. Again, I think the presentation is top-notch, the music is pretty good, if not as memorable as the previous games, and I think some of the new toys Mega Man can play with are pretty entertaining. But when I find myself dying from questionable enemy placement, the sheer amount of spikes a lot of levels contain, and choppy structure thanks to the numerous bottomless pits, I can only enjoy so much of it. I find Mega Man 4 better than 5, but both aren't as enjoyable to me as Mega Man 2 or 3. Both are structurally sound, but nothing outstanding. Now both Mega Man 4 and 5 were better than I expected when I finally got the chance to sit down and play the games for myself, but I couldn't help but notice a degrading quality when I finally began taking notes down. However, we're still not done with the NES in terms of Mega Man games. When we next meet guys, I'll see you guys with Mega Man 6. And if you're wondering why Mega Man 6 is going to get its own separate review compared to Mega Man 4 and 5, well, you'll find that out later. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Actually, before I decide to end this, there is one more thing I'd like to mention, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know what I'm talking about, but uh, for those of you unaware, Keiji Inafune, one of the co-creators of Mega Man himself, has recently started a Kickstarter for a new project of his called Mighty Number no. 9. It's pretty much Mega Man without actually being Mega Man. And uh, given the current status of Mega Man nowadays, and especially how Capcom's been pretty much ignoring him for the last few years, uh, this is pretty much what hardcore Mega Man fans are looking for, for their Mega Man fix, and uh, personally, I think this is a really ambitious project, and as you've seen with uh, my earlier Mega Man reviews, usually when the creators of the games are ambitious, they make something really fantastic, such as the likes of Mega Man 2. At the very least, it'll be as good as Mega Man 3. Um, but uh, if you haven't already, you can click on the link in the description and you'll find the link to the Kickstarter program. You know, you can contribute as little as $1, any little bit helps. But uh, they needed to reach a big, I think, well, the, the, the project's already funded. They needed $900,000, and that's all, that was broken in about 48 hours. So that's all, the game is going to happen. But now they're trying to reach a stretch goal of, I think, 2.2 million so that it actually gets console releases, PS3, uh, 360, and Wii U, because right now the game is only slated for a PC release. But uh, if you're looking for a Mega Man fix, you know, as long, as long as you don't care if it's actually Mega Man, it might as well be though, considering all the concept, conceptual designs I've seen in it, but if you're looking for a Mega Man fix, and uh, you know, if you really want to help KJ and Ifune along with his other uh, staff, then by all means, go to the Kickstarter page and fund Mighty Number no. 9. It's definitely something I'm looking forward to, and something I definitely look forward to reviewing uh, once the game comes out. It's late, it's not coming out to like April 2015, but it is something that I'm very much looking forward to because it looks like something that KJ and Nafune along with the staff really want to make and when there's ambition there's usually 
greatness up ahead. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I'll see you guys uh, most likely next week with Mega Man 6. So now I can sign off. <laughs>